Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. As some of you may know, a few months ago in October, I went completely freelance and decided to start generating my own income on my own. And thus far, it's been pretty good, uh, kind of rocky, but it's something that I've been building up towards for all of last year. So it's finally gaining a lot of the momentum that I have been wanting. And I'm very, very optimistic about 2019. I wanted to come here and kind of do a little video on a few different things that I have learned uh, professionally and personally since going freelance. The number one thing that I've probably learned since deciding to, I guess, become an entrepreneur and all that is I've learned how to advocate for myself more. I think in the past that I've done a lot of bending over backwards for people and I will let a lot of things slide, but when your income is kind of just dependent on what you're bringing in, you kind of don't have room for that. So I have really learned to be a lot more dogged about um, what I am going to be taking, what I'm not going to be taking, the type of environment I'm going to be working in, the type of people, and how I really want to be treated in these professional situations. Freelancing has really taught me how to prioritize my needs financial and otherwise over everyone else's because people will try it so a lot of people you know they will want you to be kind of at a disadvantage so things in their life will be a little bit easier and like i said in the past like i've had situations just in the last few months where for instance i had a publication that asked me to write a profile piece they wanted it in two days. It was like a rush thing. And then they kind of told me, you know, oh, well, we have three different payout dates for the month. You'll be getting yours um, as, as long as you invoice by this time, you'll be getting it by this date. And I just happened to, you know, I was, you know, trying to schedule some things and, you know, make sure all my things were in together. So I messaged them and I was like, you know, I just want to make sure that this is all on schedule. And then all of a sudden it becomes I have to wait another month. So then I have to wait allegedly two months from when I turned in the piece. And I think in the past, I might've just let it slide or whatever because I was maybe working a full-time job. And you know, when I was working full-time, I just kind of used my freelance income as like savings or discretionary or just like something else, like a little sugar on top. But since this is like the bread and butter of it all, I can't really just be letting it slide. And it also, you know, feels disrespectful. You know, you want this thing done literally split really quickly you tell me one thing and it's either false information or you're just switching it up because you want to everyone on staff is going to be paid on time in, in theory why can't i be paid on time you know i couldn't with that instance and others i just couldn't let it slide i wasn't disrespectful but i had to you know present the facts and say make it make sense piggybacking off of that i would say that i have really come into my own when it comes to understanding the power of the word no and that no is actually a complete sentence and i don't even have to a lot of times give a reason behind the no it doesn't have to be no and i'm sorry and you know usually and you know blah blah blah. i don't have to give an explanation if this is business and you know then it's business and this is how I, I need my business to be run and you know then yes it might work no it won't work if that doesn't behoove me if it doesn't work in my favor then I can just always say no I've also had to cut off some clients that I was working with who I felt were underpaying me disrespecting me and just not being my version of a good client so I've learned that I don't have to just take whatever is presented to me or thrown at me. I can negotiate, I can even walk away. So the next thing that I have learned uh, that I've never really been, it's always been kind of an issue, not a big issue, but I've definitely learned this a lot more, is that um, you need to be organized. 
you know, I'm not the most organized person and you know, when you're working a job, you don't necessarily have to worry about that because you go in, a lot of times some of your tasks are kind of set out or you kind of have an idea, but when you are working for yourself, you have to really make sure that you have systems in place, checks and balances, you have to make sure that you know, you're setting your own deadlines and sticking to them because people, you, this is very important, you know what I'm saying? And um, I realized that I wasn't as organized as I could have been after I missed an invoice. I missed a very important invoice and I was like, okay, this can't ever happen again. So it caused me to just reassess how I was doing things and to figure out a better way for me to work going forward. In addition to all those other things, I've learned to be a lot more shameless about, you know, what it is that I'm doing and the things that I'm offering in the world. You know, I'm kind of an introvert by nature and in my heart and um, talking about myself and, you know, maybe networking is not necessarily my strong suit. However, it's necessary. <laughs> It's um, necessary with the type of work that I do to, you know, make those connections. Uh, one of the venture, business ventures that I have is largely based on word of mouth and um, being personable and, you know, having people want to tell you, tell their friends and family members about your services and things like that. And so I have um, learned to, you know, even just saying, you know, more of what it is that I do and not being so humble as some of my friends has, has said, you need to stop being so humble. Um, so freelancing has really taught me to kind of uh, lean into that and to kind of like push that introvertedness to the side when it comes to the business ventures that I have. And oh, the last thing I said that I think I might have said that was the last thing, but it's not. So the last thing is I've also, you know, I think when I was much younger and even still now, I thought, for instance, that you would do one thing. Like when I was younger, I used to write poetry. So I thought, oh, I'm always going to write poetry. I haven't written a poem in like 10 years. I've learned to be way more frugal. You save so much money eating at home, I swear. And you save so much money not having to commute somewhere. Like, when I first started in October, I was like, okay, well, I'm gonna be in the house most of the time, blah, 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 blah. And it was like a revelation. And um, so I guess, you know, working for myself and uh, I guess not having the steadiest of income, you know, still having income, but not having necessarily the steadiest, especially when you're first starting out, I've definitely become a lot more frugal and um, cognizant of, you know, my money and where it's going. <laughs> Didn't understand that, you know, a person could even like be very good at something and then decide that they just don't want to do it. You know, I thought that if you were a chef and you were good, then you would want to do that for the rest of your life. And I didn't understand that maybe you could be a chef and you might not want to do it professionally. I, I understood that, of course, as I got older, but I think I had some residual um, of that type of thought process left over. And of course, you know, working for yourself, and even being a writer, I've learned that, of course, it's all about multiple streams of income and also being very diverse. So it's not necessarily just, oh, Naisha can write copy. It's like Naisha can write copy and she can edit and she does SEO and she can video edit and she can, I don't know, photo edit and blah, 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 blah. Maybe she can do UX writing or something like that um and also even things that are not related to writing i have you know other ventures that i do that have nothing to do with writing that also generate me income as well so i have learned um and and figured out uh, different ways within the writing sphere to um create income you know and freelancing and being my own business owner essentially has really kind of taught me how to uh, really assess all of my offerings and all of my talents and the things I can do and you know use that to figure out what can I offer the world that is going to give me some money. <laughs> so yes, 
those are some things that I've learned thus far um, in the few months that I've been freelancing. If you are an entrepreneur or freelancer and you have experienced similar things or uh, different uh, revelations, please let me know in the comments below. As always, come back to me. Bye-bye.